I went to college in Tennessee. The lawmakers in Tennessee are the dumbest fucks walking the planet. Especially Representative Justin Lafferty from Knoxville. Compromise was a direct effort to ensure that southern states never got the population necessary to continue the practice of slavery. So what he's saying with the three-fifths compromise is that his view is that black people should have been counted as full people for the purpose of the population of the southern states, but they should not have been given rights for the full people. Because that's a, Remember, that's what the three-fifths compromise is. It's a compromise between free states and slaveholding states. You, well, you don't get to count your enslaved population in your population because that makes you stronger than what you actually are. So it was a, a compromise. Oh, we'll only count them as three-fifths of a person. This is for congressional purposes. So what he's saying right here is that they should have been counted as a whole person for the southern states. That would have been the fair thing. To count them as whole people, despite the fact that they were enslaved. Tuberville is my senator. Tuberville is my senator. Tommy fucking Tuberville is my senator. Holy fuck, dude. And he replaced a damn good senator. Senator Doug Jones, a Democrat, very milk toast, middle of the road Democrat, is the best goddamn fucking politician you were ever going to get from Alabama. I I tried my best to raise as much awareness of that race as I could. I donated to his campaign. I campaigned for the motherfucker. I don't phone bank for politicians because the reason I don't phone bank for politicians is because I'm probably going to call somebody a dumb fuck over the phone. I hate that I don't use my talent, my gift of gab to help politicians I care about. But I feel like I'm doing them a favor by not phone banking for them. <laughs> Doug, Doug Jones prosecuted, prosecuted the KKK members that did the Birmingham church bombing. Doug Jones was always going to be good in my book. Best goddamn fucking politician you'd ever get from Alabama. And that's why I, uh, I, early on in, in the Biden administration, or in the transition, I lobbied that he be attorney general. I wish they had have made him attorney general. Merrick Garland doing a fine job thus far, though. And yet, yes, Tones, just like the way we do prisoners now, it's the same fucking shit. So that's what this motherfucker is saying here. Let that sink in. Tell me this country is not built on white supremacists. Everywhere else in the country. What does that mean? Appropriation based on population. That's how we pick. Everybody in here knows we've got nine. I hope I'm right. Nine state representatives. By limiting the number of population. I think there's like 10 or 11, isn't there? <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't lived in Tennessee in years. In the count, they specifically limit. I God, I hope he's wrong on that one. He's such a dumb fuck. Ah, he was right. There's nine. Shit. Sorry. By limiting the number of population in the count, they specifically limited the number of representatives that would be available in the slaveholding states, and they did it for the purpose of ending slavery well before Abraham Lincoln. And he's mad about it. Do we talk about that? I don't hear that anywhere in this conversation across the country. I don't know how we've gotten here. I don't know what we do about it. But talking about changing our history Changing's not the right word. Talking about incorporating another view of history while ignoring the very writings that we have access to is no way to go about it.
Yeah, the the drivers hitting protesters, that's one of those Alec bills that's been popping up in states all across the country. Tennessee, Florida, they've all fucking have passed or are trying to pass. Fucking, like, the audacity of this guy. This is just another in the long line of conservatives who won't rest until everyone stops teaching kids critical race theory. That's that's one of the things that they were running on for the upcoming 2022 election. It's the border crisis caused by Biden, critical race theory in schools. By trying to make it uh, uh, difficult for people in denser areas to vote. And people in denser areas already have their votes diluted. And it and guys, if you don't know about the prison thing, fucking prisons count. Uh, prisons are often built in very rural areas, very conservative districts, right? Out in the middle of fucking nowhere in a state. They count the prisoners towards the population of the place where they are incarcerated in the rural area to bolster right wing congressional districts. So it's even more of a perverse incentive when you've got an incentive to lock up a certain portion of the population because they don't tend to vote for you. You tend to pass laws that target a certain population. And then it's a double perverse incentive. If you're able to sell contracts to private entities to funnel public money into corporate hands. And then you're also able to bolster your own congressional power. It's a fucking win, 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 win for these motherfuckers. The country is built on white supremacy. Conservatives are furious that American schools might actively start to teach that systematic racism is a real problem in the U.S. We have fucking statues up to the oppressors every fucking where. And so far, they're winning the war to stop that from happening. Over the past few weeks and months, suburban school districts, Republican state legislators, and even former President Donald Trump have rallied against critical race theory, a framework that treats race as a construct that's been used to exploit people and acknowledges the racism inherent in major U.S. institutions. You know, the facts. The only problem is that critical race theory has now been co-opted by the right as a stand-in for any attempt to reform schools to provide a more inclusive education for children. So any mention of any kind of racism automatically gets painted as, oh, it's critical race theory because it's another boogeyman they've created. These right-wingers are, are like... They love creating these Pavlovian responses. They can just say socialism to other right-wingers, and they're all like, blah, 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 blah. Socialism, Venezuela. Ugh. And now they've done it with this. They've done it with the phrase critical race theory. None of them know what the fuck it even means. It just sounds scary to them. And if we teach critical race theory, black people might want some of our money. That's what they're thinking. Right-wingers are morons. Just in case you guys weren't aware. On Saturday, voters in the Carroll Independent School District in Texas, a district of 8,500 students in the wealthy community of South Lake outside of Dallas, overwhelmingly elected two new people to the school board who publicly vowed to reject a cultural competence action plan. <laughs> I could have done the Nancy clap. <laughs> yes, I did do. I, I, I was calling them train seals. Yes. After several racist incidents in recent years, including multiple videos showing students in the majority white district saying and chanting the N word, a district diversity council of dozens of parents, teachers, and staff came up with a 34 page plan that included hiring a director of equality and inclusion, embedding education about diversity and inclusion into the curriculum, cultural competency training for teachers, and creating a process for students to report discrimination. This was met with backlash from conservatives because of course it was. 
They paint it as an insidious attempt to implant cultural Marxism into Americans, into America's impressionable young minds. Critical race theory ain't coming here. The South Lake Families Pack, a conservative group opposing the plan, wrote on Twitter on Saturday. This is what happens when good people stand up and say, not my town, not on my watch. While schools and districts across the country have uh, have begun reforming their curricula in recent years in response to police killings and the larger... Not high enough for this shit. Maybe I'm too high. I don't fucking know. Maybe the vaccine is kicking in now. For those of you who've just joined me, I got got the vaccine. I was hiding from tornadoes yesterday, Mr. Creed. Anytime that I'm not on, one of two things have happened. Well, one, you, you bitched at me for not being on one time, and it was like a total, like a planned thing where I'm like, oh, I've used up all my voice because I've been on. I'm not going to be on on Friday. If I'm not on, two things have happened. I fell asleep after I had lunch and took bong rips. Like, I just happened to lay down on the couch, fell fucking asleep. Oh, slept through the show, Sorry. That happens sometimes. I eat lunch about three or four o'clock, take some bong rips. Sometimes that happens. Depends on how long I've been up. One, I fell asleep. Or two, I'm hiding from tornadoes. And last night it was tornadoes. Well, if you would if I'd been on last night, you wouldn't have had a Smokey. I have three cats. Two of them do not give a shit about storms. But Smokey, Smokey does not like storms. And Smokey cowers and whimpers and cries. And I did not see him for hours last night. He's got a new, I think it's in the new couch. Because he's got a new hiding place that he goes when it's storming. And I don't know where it is. I can't find him. So I like to take him out. Like, oh, dude, it's okay. I know, poor baby, but the other two do not give a shit. They'll walk out on the patio. Fucking winds blowing, lightning everywhere. Smokey thinks it's in uh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> I could be having Facebook comments fight. You want to you want to talk about Facebook comments fights? I uh, there's one going on right now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's what this show was originally supposed to be, me showing off my Facebook fights. Oh yeah, that's an odd way of saying cop shot a baby. We're going to get to that story here in just a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, she said, uh, that's an odd way of saying I didn't read the article. I said, you're right. I didn't. I read it on the Biloxi News site where it happened, actually. What do you think I missed? (laughs) Because that's we're getting ready to see it from the Biloxi News site where it actually happened. And this person responded, I think you didn't read the article as you just stated. You didn't read the article. No, I did not read the Nashville version of this article. I did not, ma'am. I read it from the Biloxi news site. It happened in Biloxi, Mississippi. I, okay, like, so you conflate me working? (laughs) And it is work because you don't understand that, like, I gain a lot of followers from I'm trying to I'm trying to comment more from my actual page instead of you know me commenting from the Justin freaking page to gain followers but a lot of times I am actually working and when I'm like exporting something or I've, I've got a bunch of media to import or I'm using a fucking effect that takes fucking three or four minutes to process I flip over to Facebook and I troll some people. I'm sitting here in front of my fucking multimedia center. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so back to critical race theory. Do you want to hear from one of the conservatives who was having a shit fit over it? Let's. Her name is Candace Owens. 
marginalized now because kids are learning this. And, and I know, Isabel, you do a lot of work in this space and talked about, you know, your experience in the college campus as a conservative. And, and I'm pretty sure you guys know this, but I am not high enough to listen to Candace Owens. But there just seems to be this pollution of minds that all they want children to think about is race. And before, uh, earlier today, I actually had a friend reach out to me. Her daughter attends a boarding school in Connecticut. And after the, the trial verdict was read, this is what they sent out to all of the kids. I actually could not even believe. Um, and I'm not going to obviously read this in entire um, letter, but it says... For many, the state of Minnesota versus Derek Michael Chauvin has been a stark, heart-wrenching reminder of the suffering one human being can inflict on another. It has also been a painful reminder that racism still permeates and threatens the everyday lives of marginalized marginalized groups in this. Now, I want, I want everyone to remember, Candace Owens originally came to prominence through a court case in which Candace Owens sued a university over racial discrimination. I think it was a university, wasn't it? Somebody verify me on that one. I believe it was a school. She sued for racial discrimination and won. That's where Candace Owens got catapulted into the spotlight. This country. Can one of you guys help me? What was the element of the Derek Chauvin trial that was proven to be about race. Still have yet to answer that question. One piece to be of honest. proof. But you're right, critical race. Well, 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 we we watched numerous pieces of evidence where we saw a black man just constantly get harassed by police. They came at him with guns drawn right off the fucking bat, which I think is a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights. Why people don't get that? I Sorry, sorry. I some do. Police are dicks. Police are dicks to everybody. It can happen to white people. It's just more likely to happen to black people statistically. Because you might hear a dumb fuck right winger say this. The police kill more white people than they do black people. Like by the numbers, that's true. Police kill more white people than they do black people every year. That's not something to be proud of. It's something that upsets me as well. But when you adjust for population and you look at the statistics per capita, they kill more black people. Sorry. This theory is the cancer of education that's now... And, 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 and not that studies have been done that show that cops are less likely to pull over black people at night. Let that sing. Cops are less likely to pull over black people at night. Cops are less likely to pull over black people at night. The numbers of who they pull over even out during the nighttime. They pull more black people over during the day. Studies have proven it. Effectively indoctrinating this entire generation of young Americans that are now going to grow up and take that beyond school, so beyond elementary school, beyond middle school and high school and their college campuses, into whatever realm of American society they work in, the halls of Congress, a corporate boardroom, America's streets, genuinely believing it is our duty and responsibility and it is morally correct to view people differently based on their skin color, to believe that white people have had this inherent advantage in our country forever, they still do, and black people are always inherently disadvantaged. No, not treat them differently. To recognize the way that we've had advantages. People my great-grandfather's age were given land by the federal government because they were white. Black people were still in chains. That has a profound effect on on generational wealth. I really can't talk tonight. The vaccine has fucked me up. It has a profound effect on generational wealth. And as we know, generational wealth is one of the number one predictors of success in this country. Recognize and learn better. Exactly. By the New York Times' 1619 project. But trying to whitewash it and deny it ain't going to do anything. And many other school districts across the country. But here's the million dollar question that nobody has been asking throughout this process. This concept of systemic and institutionalized racism. If it really exists, let's examine every system and institution in American culture today. Okay. Higher education and academia, big tech, large corporations, Hollywood. 
Okay, so academia, she's at least saying something that, you know, the government has some control over when it comes to public universities. But then she's like, big tech and, and what was what was it, the media? What, you, you what, what, private entities? What? You're wanting to force something on private entities? You know, it's one thing to talk about schools and governmental policy because you have control over policy with schools. Big tech is a private corporation. You've told me corporations are like the end-all, be-all in our society. And all of a sudden, because they're not on your side, oh, we got to do something about the corporations. Fuck. But the music industry, movies, everything that permeates our culture daily, all the way up to the federal government, is all controlled by the left. Right. So if there's really systemic and institutionalized racism... That's not true at all. Not true at all. First first of all, there is no fucking left in this country. And ma'am, I don't control fucking shit. And in this hyper-capitalist society, you clearly don't know what the fucking left is. So there's not people advocating for the abolition of private property in mainstream thought in America. If they sell advertising on their fucking media, they can't possibly be the left. Ma'am, you stupid fuck. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? But she's being oppressed by the media. That is a great, great question. And Brandon, like, if your child was at this school... And it was a dumb was question! What, what would you do? Oh, I'm going to act a fool. <laughs> I'm going to go up there and act a fool. They're going to call, call the police on me and everything. <laughs> you know, this Which is, is your opportunity. Well, good luck with that, brother! Let's see how the police treat you. Go in your school. Act a fool. Let them call the police on you. Then, then you will see what's up, sir. You got it. You, you, curiouser. You hit it on the head. When she says the left runs the media, she's saying Jews. It's the same anti-Semitic trope. 